Okay, for this video, we're going to tie a foam grasshopper. This one is one of my favorite grasshoppers as well. I, I tie quite a few different grasshopper patterns, but one thing I really like about this pattern is uh, super simple to tie. It's you tie it in about one spot, and that's about the only place you really do any work. So, um, okay, so to start off with, very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little piece of foam that, if you notice, this is a uh, two-tone foam. There's yellow on the bottom and then tan on the top. It's, and it's four millimeters thick, so relatively thick foam. Because of that, I usually use a larger, a larger hook. This is a size six, uh, two by long dry fly hook. So to tie this, I'm going to kind of size it up here. Looks like I want it about right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, I'm going to kind of twist, or not twist, but bend that foam right over the hook, push it into the, uh, the head there. You know, notice it makes that little, that little dent in the foam. That kind of tells me exactly where I'm going to use my needle nose scissors here and punch a hole in that foam. Once I do that, now I can take that hole and run that foam right up on this hook. There we go. Okay, now I've got the the foam right up there on this hook. I get my thread on the hook. Right here, right in the right up here near the front. Okay. And we're gonna situate that. Situate that foam the way we had it earlier, just like that. I'm going to kind of bend that foam back. I'm going to tie this thing off just like that. Now, pretty thick foam. This was four millimeters thick. Now that I've bent it over, I've got eight millimeters of foam there. So it takes quite a bit of wraps. You want to get fastened on pretty tight. Oftentimes I use a heavier thread so that it'll uh, fasten a little bit better. But once I get that tightened down nicely, I feel like I got it. We leave it about like that. Next thing we're gonna do is put in a little bit of elk hair. So I'm gonna tie in some elk hair onto this fly. Get a little pinch of it. Again, not too much, but uh, I always say when you're tying in elk hair, it's better to have less than more. You don't want to have too much on your fly because if you do, you'll you'll end up, for one, it's going to fight you when you tie it, and for two, it ends up just becoming a much larger, bushier fly than normal. Again, there's a lot of this uh, fuzzy stuff in the elk hair. I like to clear that out. It helps the helps that elk hair fasten to the fly a little bit better. Once I've got that fuzzy stuff kind of cleared out of there, take my elk hair, gonna put it in my hair stacker. We'll stack it. Okay, looks good and even. All right, I'm gonna take this elk hair Place it right on top of the fly. Try to make it about the same length as your foam. Once I have it where I want it, I hold it in my left hand. My first wrap is somewhat loose, then I pull tight. You can see that elk hair flare up. That's a good thing. I don't want to break my thread, but I want to make sure I get it nice and tight here. And then my wraps are nice successive wraps that do not overlap each other as I'm tying this. Oh, I got some elk hair flaring back on me. There's so much foam here. So my successive wraps work back, work back, work towards the back of the fly. Okay. Once I get quite a few of those in, then I like to have a couple that I wrap over the top of my wraps. Just kind of holds the fly in place a little bit. Okay, again, so this is what we like. We like this elk hair. We don't want the rest of it. So I'm gonna grab the rest of this stuff, pinch it in this finger, use my needle nose scissors, get right down there at the base 
and trim that off of there. Didn't get it quite as good as I'd like to, so I'm going to trim a little bit more. Okay, there we go. All right, then I'm going to add some rubber legs. Black rubber legs. I prefer those when I'm tying hoppers. I like the contrast. And I'm going to tie those in. Notice there's two, two rubber legs here. They're still fastened together. That's how they come when, when you buy them. And I like to tie them in that way. Three small, three short, soft wraps. And then once I get that tied on there, take my scissors and run the needle point of one of the scissors right through them. Just lift it up. And I've got two rubber legs tied in at the exact same length. And I can just pull them to the side and place them right where I want them. Okay, so one thing about this fly is a lot of times with that elk hair right there, it's it's kind of sticking up and I don't know, it just kind of doesn't look as nice as it would if it was covered up. So what I like to do is then I like to get a little yellow, little yellow foam, cut just a small piece and we put a little yellow topper on the fly. So take this little yellow piece of foam and Top this fly with it. Oh, I better twist that a little bit. It's not, in the, it's not quite where I want it. There we go. All right, I got the topper on there. It's time to whip finish this thing. So I'll take my whip finisher. Notice this fly is a little bit different in the fact that all of the tying happens in one spot. We really only had the thread right there where all of this stuff was tied in. And that's it. That's the fly. This one, because of that, I like to use a little bit of fly head cement uh, just to keep it from, from twisting. Now that I've got it whip finished, take my topper, snip that a little bit. I can snip my thread. And the last thing I like to do is to give this a little bit more of a the body a little bit more of a the shape and profile of a hopper I take the uh, take the fly out of the vise and then I tend I try to trim it a little bit tapered in the back there so trim that side then I'll trim that side just gives the fly a little bit more of that tapered appearance that I'm that I'm going for. So there it is. Well, the foam hopper pattern. This is a this one really floats well, and because the hook is only fastened in one spot, a lot of times you can tie in you can tie in a dropper right here and drop it and fish something subsurface while you're fishing this dry fly as that hook will settle on the on the water and the rest of this will kind of sit on on the surface so great fly to fish with a dropper and uh, quick easy tie <laughs>